Good afternoon once again. Please stand for the arrival of the Prime Minister of St. Christopher and Davis. Thank you so much. You may be seated. At we, as we acknowledge the arrival of Her Excellency Dean Marcella Leibard, Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis.
afternoon, Your Excellency. My name is Inspector Marvin Thompson, commander of this parade. The parade consists of two platoons in perfect order, ready and awaiting the pleasure of your inspection, Your Excellency. You may be seated. Thank you. As we watch the inspection of the points. Permission for the parade to march fast and slow and keep time, Your Excellency.
Your Excellency, Dean Marcella Leibard, Governor General of St. Christopher and Nevis, Honorable Dr. Terence Jew, Prime Minister and Ministers of National Security, Honorable Laniel Blanchett, Speaker of National Assembly, Your Lordship, the Honorable Justice Patrick Thompson, Honorable Jeffrey Hanley, Deputy Prime Minister, and other ministers of the St. Kitts, sorry, and other ministers and members of the federal cabinet. Honorable Eric Evelyn, acting premier, and other members of the Nevis federal cabinet. Honorable Evelyn, sorry. Honorable Jeffrey Hanley, deputy prime minister, and other members of the federal cabinet. Honorable Eric Evelyn, Acting Premier and other members of the National, sorry, of the Nevis Island Assembly, members of the Diplomat and Consul Corps, Pastor Eric Combach, Force Chaplain, and other members of the clergy. Miss Cecile Hull, Acting Permanent Secretary, National, sorry, Ministry of National Security, Permanent Secretaries, and other government officials. Dr. Lionel Rollins, National Security Advisor, Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Cromery, Commander of the St. Kitts Nevis Defense Force, Mr. James Sutton, Commissioner of Police and Mistress Sutton, Mr. Franklin Dorset, Acting Commissioner of Correction, former commanders, commissioners, 
and other members of the Ministry of National Security, rank and files of the St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force, other invited guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and esteemed recruit, good afternoon. It is with honor and pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to this special occasion of the Police Recruitment Passing Out, Ceremony Course 46. Today mark a significant milestone in the journey of these dedicated recruits who have undergone training to join the noble profession of law enforcement. To our distinguished guests, we are grateful for your present and unwavering support. Your commitment to the principles of justice and public safety is a source of inspiration for both recruits and the entire law enforcement com community. To the recruits of course 46, congratulations on reaching this essential moment in your career. Your hard work, dedication, and sacrifice has brought you to this day. And we commend you for your commitment to upholding the principles of duty, honor, and service. As we witness the passing out of these exceptional individuals, let us collectively celebrate their achievements and anticipate the positive impact that they will undoubtedly have in our communities. The challenges are ahead. They may be great, but it's your resolution. The bonds forged during your training will serve as a foundation and selfless service. Once again, welcome to this occasion May today be a celebration of accomplishment and symbols of positive future as they await our new officers. Thank you for joining us in honoring course 46 and letting us, let us continue to support and uplift each other in the pursuit of safer and more just society. I will now call on Mr. Erickson Cumberbatch, Force Chaplain, to invoke God's blessing.
Excellency. Governor General De Marcelo Leibard, Honorable Prime Minister, and members of Cabinet, Commissioner of Police, and High Command, Honorable Guests, Recruits, and all other guests, good afternoon. Please join me in prayer as we commence this session. Can we stand? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your faithfulness and for your goodness towards us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a fair day. We thank you for bringing us to this occasion when we celebrate the passing out of our recruits, of course, number 46. We thank you for bringing them through the rough and tiresome training session and to be able to meet this afternoon to celebrate their final graduation. We thank you. We thank you for our Governor General in our midst. We thank you for our Prime Minister and the Cabinet members, our Commission on All Rights. We thank you, Lord, for your favor upon us. And as we proceed this afternoon with this passing out parade, again, we're asking for your favor. We're asking for your grace and your mercies be extended to us. We give you praise for all that shall be accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for chaplain for that, for invoking God's presence. We will now have the court the course report from Inspector Marvin Thompson, commander of the training school. Good afternoon, all. Madam Chair, with your permission to adopt the protocol so ably established. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. This scripture, taken from Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 11, admonishes us to stay the course even when there are difficulties. So too, when individuals of our beautiful federation offer themselves for service in the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force, they are required to stay the course, both figuratively and literally. Course 46 commenced, commenced like most, like most of the courses, courses did when we started on, on July, July 24th, 2023. Initially, the course began with 25 recruits. A few days later, the number increased to 29. The proportion of male to female recruits was, however, significant. Of the 29 trainees, 17 were females and 12 were males. Consequently, a shift in the usual accommodations was necessitated. I stand to be corrected, but I have found no evidence to rebut the fact that Course 46 is historic in this regard. I have found no evidence to suggest that any prior course had a female proportion that was larger than the male counterpart, and certainly not to this extent. During the course, the number of recruits dwindled to 26. The current composition is 16 females and 10 males. 
These 26 officers are here participating in the graduation ceremony today. The course lasted approximately six months and was conducted in accordance with our course training standards. Recruits were trained in police subjects such as criminal law, evidence and procedure, and general duties. Training also included weapons training, defensive tactics, self-defense, and physical training. Within the border headings, lessons taught comprise the laws of evidence, first officer on the scene, statement writing, case file preparation, active listening skills, use of force, firearm training, and human rights, just to name a few. Recruits were assessed in three phases in the above mentioned subject matter areas. These assessments in these areas were aggregated to achieve a maximum score of 100%. The first six weeks of training constituted phase one. These first or elementary tests included the police subjects mentioned earlier, that is self-defense, both theoretical and practical, physical training and military drills. These initial assessments accounted for 15% of the overall mark. The next six weeks, weeks seven through 11, comprise the second phase. At this intermediate juncture, the areas of assessment were identical to the first. But of course, this, at this stage, the level of difficulty and the amount of content was increased. These secondary assessments accounted for 25% of the overall grade. The third and final phase of the training not only added the additional content and difficulty, but it encapsulated the sum of knowledge and experiences recruits had gained thus far. The areas of focus and assessment in this final stage, in addition to the drills, the PT, or physical training, and self-defense, included the firearm. That is, the firearm training was done in the last phase. Also at this stage, the police subjects were broken up into the evidence and procedure, criminal law, and the general duties. This third and final stage accounted for 60% of the total aggregate. To successfully pass the training course, recruits were required to obtain an overall aggregate score, minimum aggregate score of 60%. That is, when the aggregate score of a recruit of all three phases were combined, the recruit must have obtained a minimum score of 60% to be considered to have successfully passed the course. Additionally, recruits were required to obtain a minimum 60% in the individual aspects of the training. That is 60% in self-defense PT, military drills, and the police subjects. There were challenges from the genesis of the course. Some expected, others not. More so because we had given commitment to the commissioner that recruits of course number 46 would form part of the contingent of the 40th anniversary celebration of independence. And of the 29 recruits on course, we needed at least 18 to form the platoon. Additionally, we had only five weeks to prepare. Three weeks in, we could hardly get 12 recruits on average for rehearsal, as the remainder sat on the sidelines due to medical reasons. We persevered, however, and we met the objective, and course 46 were able to participate in the contingent that the police sent to the Independence Parade celebrations. The training tested both recruits and instructors, but we as instructors understood that we 
diamonds are formed under pressure. And we were intent on producing diamonds. I could hear some of the voices of protest when we were engaged in the diamond process, in the diamond making process. Voices saying things like, seem like they want to kill people. Collins. The contrary was true. <laughs> we never tried to kill, but we gave our all to build. We were preparing future instructors, future commissioners, future leaders. As the scripture says, no discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who have been trained by it. Recruits, of course, number 46, again, did us proud in the national drill competition, where we placed, we were awarded third and second. We know where we placed and we leave it there. <laughs> but they did us proud, testament to the diamond making process. The journey, of course, 46 to this point, the graduation, can be summed up in the famous quote by Charles Dickens. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It definitely was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of infidelity. It was the season of light. And I'm sure they would say it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. Refurbishing any existing building for a different purpose requires some level of construction and demolition. So too, when some level of construction was required to make the trainees of course number 46 fit for purpose, but construction requires builders and other personnel. Accordingly, the training of recruits of course number 46 would not have been possible without the requisite personnel. For course 46, the instructional staff included Sergeant Leah Francis, Sergeant Antonio Brown, or drill sergeant, Corporal Crystal Bailey, and myself, Inspector Marvin Thompson. The culinary staff included Mrs. Miss Omalara Challenger, Miss Mavis Simmons, Miss Janice Lake. Our secretary, our able secretary, was Miss Enemike Powell. I would like publicly to thank all of them for their efforts during this training. We were ably assisted by visiting facilitators. Those names are listed in your program. And we are genuinely appreciative of their contributions. Permit me, however, to mention one of the names of those facilitators, namely Joseph Liburn, retired ACP who recently passed. Mr. Liburn, retired, though retired, invested of his time and knowledge in many of officers and many a course, including course 46. Days before his passing, we had the opportunity to visit him in hospital in Nevis. He was his usual self, upbeat and optimistic. We are saddened by his passing, but we are heartened to have benefited from his benevolence. I beg leave at this moment to honor Mr. Liburd with a moment of silence. If you would honor me, uh, we stand, please. Thank you. You may be seated. We in the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force have lost a treasure, a stalwart in Mr. Liburd, 
On behalf of all the instructional and non-instructional staff, I wish to extend my profound condolences to the family of Mr. Liebert. I wish also to extend gratitude to all who are gathered here today in support of our young officers. I wish to thank those who have contributed in any way to the success of Course 46 and to the culmination at this graduation ceremony. Thank you. Thank you so much, Inspector Thompson. You know, the force is go um, governed by a number of code ethics, and uh, I saw accountability standing out very strongly. want to thank you for that. Even though, you know, you had your shortcomings, you made sure that you outlined it today for everybody to know it wasn't an easy road. Thank you so much. We will now have a brief address by the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Jake Sutton. Pleasant good afternoon to all. Kindly permit me to adopt the protocol that was so ably established by our chair. However, permit me to pay special attention to the Governor General, Her Excellency Dave Marcella Leibert, the Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Terence Zhu, Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Lenin Bencher, Acting Premier of the Nevis Island Assembly, Honorable Eric Evelyn, other members of the federal parliament, members of the diplomatic corps and consular, members of the judiciary, other distinguished guests, fellow officers, and most importantly, our committed and proud recruits. Today marks a very significant milestone in their journey after enduring and undergoing six strenuous, grueling months of training. Now, we are witnessing the culmination of their hard work and resiliency. Throughout this time, they have all remained focused and determined to succeed with a great sense of hope pride and admiration, I present to you our newly minted trained police officers. <laughs> Course 46, you have persevered, you have conquered, you have overcome. You have made it. Congratulations on this great achievement. As Commissioner of Police, I must express how impressed I am by your accomplishments. It is indeed an honor and a privilege for me to be able to witness and share in this passing out ceremony. This ceremony I will cherish. You are the first batch of recruits to be trained under my leadership. It is such a humbling and rewarding experience for me. Your decision to pursue a career in law enforcement and to become members of this noble profession is one of great sacrifice and valor. Law enforcement is not for the faint at heart. It requires grit, determination, and courage. These are all attributes that all of you possess. I commend you for your passion, your commitment in assisting to uphold the law and to protect and serve our communities. Having endured six 
have endured months of intense training, you are now more prepared and equipped to effectively deal with any situation that you may encounter in your day-to-day -day interaction with those whom you serve. I am certain at times you felt mentally and physically drained, even daunted by the task of that seems insurmountable, yet you never quit. You never gave up. Today, today's activity proved that it was worth it. You have now joined the ranks of one of the most challenging yet rewarding professions on earth. Crime fighting is not an easy task. It requires critical thinking, the ability to make difficult decisions on the spot with the hope of obtaining the best possible outcomes. In the execution of your duties, you must employ patience, accountability, honesty, diligence, integrity, consistency, tact, and empathy. Let your impact be felt. Be agents of change and good role models for others to emulate. In your deliberations, be assertive, yet fair. Maintain that human touch. At times, you may be required to use your heart to guide your actions. I implore all of you to maintain that high standard, high standard of service which you are capable of. Work hard and always endeavor to give your best. Even though your training is completed, the real work of policing has just begun. The learning process continues. You will gain more knowledge and experience as you go about your daily duties. Your presence here today, I am certain, was met with some accommodation by your families and significant others. In this regard, I take this opportunity to thank, I take this opportunity to thank them for their understanding encouragement and support. I know they too, born, they too have borne some of the sacrifices and hardship with, with, and hardship with you being away from home, having very little interaction or contact with them during training. However, all of this could not have been possible without the hard work and efforts of the staff, the police training complex, and as such, they deserve to be recognized. <laughs> they have all played a significant role. Commendations are in order for the course facilitators, instructors, for the exceptional work they did in preparing you, the recruits. Their invaluable contributions cannot be overlooked or go unnoticed. Give them a round of applause for me. The quest to effectively deal with crime, its prevention, detection, and prosecution continues. Hence, amidst all the grandeur and splendor of the ceremony, I must share with you the priority areas set in the police strategic plan for 2023 to 2026. The plan includes Seven priority areas that are as follows. One, enhanced crime prevention initiatives. Two, community policing. Three, road safety. Four, human resource development. Five, better use of technology. Six, ongoing collaboration with other agencies. And seven, evidence-based policing. We will work assiduously that these goals are realized or achieved, but we cannot do it alone. We will work together, and I say, we will work together to achieve our goal and objectives. As you embark on your career in law enforcement, I want to remind you that your goal is not just a job. 
it is a calling to serve and protect. An investment in our country's peace and security speaks volume and is inspiring for its progress and development. Undoubtedly, I know our investment in you will be a great reward. Congratulations once again on reaching this pivotal moment. You have made us all proud, but most importantly, you have made yourself even prouder. Give them all the applause. May your law enforcement journey be purposeful, rewarding, and fulfilling as you continue to, to, to be a great service to your country and your fellow men. Remember to always stay true to the oath you have taken. Let me repeat. Remember to always stay true to the oath that you have taken. Course 46, graduate, endless possibilities await you. Go forth and serve with distinction. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner of Police, Mr. Sutton. I think you just gave the recruits a power pack to go out with. We will now have a special drill display, display by the recruits of Force 46.
Good afternoon, good evening rather to all who are here. I was sitting next to the Speaker of the House, and she said this really takes a lot of endurance. But my second thought was, it means that they trained and they train hard. Put your hands together for them. Well trained. Let me recognize the Governor General, D. Marcella Leibard. Let me also recognize the Speaker of the House, Ms. Lanine Blanchett, Honorable. Let me recognize the Deputy Prime Minister and representative for this area, the Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Henley. Let me also recognize our distinguished Attorney General, Honorable Gat Wilkin. I also want to recognize members from the legal fraternity who are here with us. Let me recognize as well the Commissioner, James Sutton. I also want to recognize Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Gray, National Security Advisors, Dr. Lionel Rollins, and also other, our other advisor, Dr. Powell. Let me also recognize Commissioner, yes, let me also recognize um, Commissioner, some of the persons who are here, Commissioner of Prisons, Mr. Dorsett, Mr. Dorsett, also want to recognize us anyone else from the federal cabinet. And I saw the Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas who came in. I also want to recognize him. Let me recognize Honorable Evelyn from the Nevis Island Administration, other members from the Diplomatic and Consular Corps. Let me also recognize the other members of the High Command of the St. Kitts and Nevis Police Force. Let me recognize the PS in national security who is with us. And the clergy, of course, of the police force, Reverend Cumberbatch and other high-ranking officials. I also want to recognize the parents, guardians, supporters, supporters of our recruits. You have done well, and they have demonstrated that you have done well. I also want to take this opportunity, most, most importantly, to recognize those who are passing out today, as we say in colloquial language, meaning that they have graduated as police officers. Course 46, put your hands together for them. I recognize each and every one of you. Today marks a significant milestone in the annals of our nation's security history. This 43rd passing out, course 46 of the Royal St. Christopher Nevis Police Force. It is with profound honor and immense pride that I stand before you to address this distinguished gathering as the Minister of National Security. To the courageous men and women of course 46, I extend my heartfelt congratulations on your remarkable achievement your unwavering commitment 
the discipline and dedication have brought you to this pivotal juncture, a moment that not only signifies just the culmination of your rigorous training, but also the commencement of your noble journey as police officers working to safeguard our beloved Federation. I am deeply pleased with what I see here with this particular set of recruits. It is noteworthy and commendable that the majority of the officers in course 46 are women. 16 women are officially joining the ranks alongside 10 male counterparts. This gender composition is unprecedented and represents a significant stride toward gender parity and diversity within law enforcement. The substantial number of women not only underscores the inclusive nature of our police force, but also reflects the growing recognition of the invaluable contribution that women bring to the field of policing. This historic achievement speaks volumes about the progressive mindset and forward-thinking approach of our nation in embracing diversity and empowering women to excel in roles traditionally dominated by men. I therefore salute all our recruits and salute further the women and of this particular group. Put your hands together for them. Recruits, as you stand on the cusps of assuming your responsibilities as enforcers of law and order and guardians of the people, I urge you to embrace and embody the core values of integrity, professionalism, and compassion that embody the very essence of policing. Remember, you are entrusted with the sacred duty of pursuing justice, protecting the innocent, and serving our communities with honor and dignity. In today's ever-evolving world filled with challenges and threats, the role of law enforcement is more critical than ever before to our success and development as a sovereign nation. From combating crime and violence to ensuring public safety and security, the demands placed upon our police force are manifold and diverse. A police officer's duty extends beyond law enforcement. They encompass community engagement and outreach and bridge building initiatives aimed at fostering trust and cooperation between law enforcement agencies and the communities they serve. You are beacons of hope, agents of positive change, guardians of peace, and advocates for progress. Your ability to empathize, communicate effectively, and mediate conflicts must at all times reflect a deep sense of duty and responsibility toward building a more inclusive and harmonious society. In embracing your multifaceted role, you exemplify the noblest ideals of national service, standing as pillars of strength and solidarity in times of adversity and uncertainty. With your training, resilience, and spirit of service, you are well equipped to confront these challenges head on and emerge victorious. I also commend the families and loved ones who have stood by your side, offering unwavering support and encouragement throughout your journey. Their sacrifices and steadfastness have undoubtedly played and will continue to play a pivotal role in shaping your success. And for that, they deserve our deepest gratitude and appreciation. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you very much. Officers, as you embark on this noble calling, always remember the oath you have sown. As was said, by the commissioner. The oath to uphold the law without fear or favor, to protect the vulnerable, and to strive for justice and equity for all. Let your actions be guided by principles of fairness, empathy, and respect 
for human rights, knowing that the trust and confidence of our communities and the communities you serve are your most precious assets. And in closing, let me say that I had the opportunity to meet all of you at the beginning of your course, something that is not normally done by the Minister of National Security. But I thought it was important for me to visit you at your training site to encourage you and in some way help to push you through the difficulties that I know you would face and that you would come out victorious. Today, a large percentage of you have graduated and for that, I am immensely pleased. Put your hands together once again for all of them. And further, as Minister of National Security and your Prime Minister, let me reiterate my heartfelt congratulations to all the graduates of Course 46. May your endeavors be crowned with success. Serve your country with distinction and become beacons of hope and inspiration for generations to come. In other words, help us to build the sustainable island state that we all aspire to. Thank you, and may God bless all of you. May God bless the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. May God bless our beloved nation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Drew, for those words of encouragement, not only to the recruit, but to all law enforcement officers. And reminding them once again this evening to always remember the oath that they took. We will now have, have presentation of awards. We will now call upon Dr. Lionel Rollins, NEC. Number five, number four, five, eight, Constable Newton, most discipline. This award was donated by Honorable Conris Maynard, retired force chaplain, Pastor Leroy Benjamin, Constable Hazel, Springfield Egg Farm, and Miss Gums Williams.
number 447, Constable Herbert, most helpful. This was donated by the first chaplain, Mr. Cumberbatch and St. Kitts Marriott Resort and Royal, Royal Beach Casino. We now call upon number 462, Constable Woman, Woman Constable Williams, most improved, donated by Honorable Samuel Duggins and Coy Resort St. Kitts. We now call number 469, Constable Samuel. She'll be awarded for most discipline, donated by Park Hyatt and St. Kitts and Nevis National Bank. She'll also be awarded for most improved attitude and communication, donated by Mr. Dr. Sorry, by Dr. Henry, Deputy Governor of East CCP. We now welcome 467, Constable Lawrence, best rifle shot. This was donated by Dr. Rollins, National Security Advisor. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you very much, Dr. Rollins, for your contribution. We now will call upon our permanent secretary, Ms. Hall, to assist us. Number 453, Constable Fleming, third place overall. This was donated by Ramada Hotel, Digicel, St. Kitts, and Lieutenant Colonel Attorney Anthony Comrie. We now call upon 422, Woman Councilor Eddie, best at final examination. This was donated by Honorable Conris Maynard, Mr. Charles Wilkin Kessy, Police Corporate Credit Union, and Patsy Barron Grill. Councilor Eddie will also be awarded for best aggregated in classroom, donated by ACP Dr. McCarter Brown. 
retired Major Leroy Percival and retired Inspector Stephen Hen H Hector Sorry. We now call upon number 446, Woman Constable Henry, best at drills. This was donated by retired Major Leroy Percival, retired Fire Officer Mr. Clarence Hendrickson. Constable Henry will also be awarded for best in kit and turned out. This was donated by Sergeant Clancy Rogers and TDC. We now call upon number 776, Constable Patrick Bratcher, best at physical training. This was donated by retired Commissioner of, Pol of Correction, Terence James, and Smart Electronics. We now call upon number 464, Constable Richardson, best in public speaking. This was donated by the Right Honorable Prime, sorry, the Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, and Gary Foods and Flowers. Thank you very much, Ms. Hull, for your contribution. We now call upon the Commissioner of Police, Mr. James Sutton. We now call upon number 452, Constable Wallace. Constable Wallace have a few awards. First, you have the Commissioner of Baton of Honor, donated by the Commissioner of Police, Mr. James Sutton. We also have Most Outstanding Student, donated by Dr. Henry, Deputy Governor of ECCB. We also have Best at Weapon Training, donated by Pyramid Security Consulting, Best at Self-Defense, donated by Gary Foods and Flowers. Best at Pistol Shot, donated by retired ACP Adolphus, Adolf, sorry, Adams.
Commissioner, I'm not finished with you as yet, sir. No, not from what I feel. Already call out all of his awards. Okay, now we continue with number 445, Woman Council Challenger, for placing second overall, donated by ACP Mitchell. We also have Constable Challenger, top female, donated by Honorable Senator Dr. Joel Clark and Dr. Henry. She also has most consistent donated by Director Latoya Lake Marsham and Nature Spark. Thank you very much for your contribution, Commissioner of Police. You may leave. We'll now call upon the Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Drew. We'll now call upon again number 452 for the Prime Minister plaque. Constable Wallace, presented by the Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Terence Strew. He also got Best Recruit trophy donated by Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Terence Strew. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you very much, Prime Minister, for your contribution with distributing of the prizes. We now call upon Dr. Powell, syndicate leader, number 86, Sergeant Anthony Brown, best syndicate, plaque donated by Dr. Edwin Powell. This syndicate was for, um, made up of Woman Constable Challenger, Constable Wallace, Constable Femin, Constable Newton, Constable Henry, Constable Warner, Constable Samuel, Constable Lawrence, and Constable Williams. Let us welcome them, please. Sorry, Woodley. Dr. Edwin Brown. Sorry, Dr. Edwin Powell. Mr. Prime Minister, could you come back and do us the honors, please? Let's give them a round of applause.
Thank you very much, Prime Minister, once again for your assistance. We will now call upon number 452, Councillor Wallace, best we could, to give the vote of thanks. Good afternoon, Your Excellency, the Governor General, the Honorable Prime Minister, Commissioner of Police, other dignitaries mentioned on the protocol, family, friends, instructors, and esteemed guests. We are the survivors who are Spartacists. We finally made it. Looking back at July 6th, now, looking back at July, six months seems like an eternity. But here we are. When we look back to July, it's hard to believe that the only way we knew each other was by our surname. Now we not only know the last names or fourth numbers, but it seems like everyone has a nickname. Right? Granny95, Brother Toes, Big Bird, Cookie Monster, we've been through a lot. As I stand here today and see my fellow force mates here, I can't help but reflect on the first day. It all started one afternoon on the 23rd of July. Sergeant Brown came out and gave us a synopsis on what was expected of us. Then everything took a dark turn when he appointed me to be the first duty student because I was enthusiastic and on time. And for that, I ran dozens of laps along the parade square that day. That was the most difficult time for me during this training, being the duty student. Everyone was on my back, both instructors and course mates. That same night, we didn't get any sleep because I was tasked to ring the bell every hour that entire night. Some of us wanted to quit that very night. The voices of both instructors and course mates prevented me from sleeping that first night. Imagine trying to sleep and all you are hearing is voices in your head. Wallace! Wallace! Everyone constantly shouting your name. It was haunting. I wanted to quit. But I didn't. I didn't want to disappoint my family, so I kept it moving. As the days passed, acquaintances turned into friendship. And then we slowly forged into the cohesive, motivated team of one you see sitting here today. During those 27 weeks, we survived constant testing, the waking up every morning at four, to clean a compound that would only get dirty in a few hours. We survived the demanding physical training session, despite sustaining numerous injuries. We survived the drills the most grueling part of each day, and the barracks inspection. 
no matter how clean it was, or how the bed was stretched and ironed to perfection, in the instructor's eyes, it was never good enough. As a reward for failing morning inspections, we were complimented of how special we were. Placing our palms on the scorching hot concrete while we wait on Herbert to get off the toilet. It was difficult, but it got a tiny bit easier by the day. I extend my sincere thanks to the dedicated trainers, Corporal Bailey, Sergeant Brown, Sergeant Francis, and Inspector Thompson, who have molded us into capable officers, instilling in us the values of duty and service. To our families, your unwavering support throughout this demanding training has been our strength. And to the drummers and band who has played a vital role in this ceremony. And for that, we thank you. I would like to give a special thanks to my mother for always being there for me from the very start. Thank you, Mommy. I love you. And to my twin brother for preparing me for training school. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are, the newest members the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. We promise to make the police force, our community, and our families proud. Thank you. Thank you so much, Constable Wallace, for, for those words. We will now have the closing prayer by Mr. Komabach, the first chaplain. Before I do that, I just want to thank everyone who contributed this evening. The St. Kitts Nevis Defense Force Banner, the inspection of parade by Her Excellency the Governor General, the Honorable P Prime Minister, Commissioner of Police. We want to thank Mr. Kamabach for invoking God's presence, the course overview by Inspector Thompson, the brief address by Commissioner of Police this display by recruits of course 46, the featured address by the Dr. Honorable Terence Drew, and the officers who assisted with the awardees. I want to thank everybody for coming out. We now invite Mr. Kamabach to invoke. God's as we dismiss. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, Sergeant Tudain. Just before I give the closing prayer, I just want to Remind the recruits of a few advice that I think will be helpful as you progress. As full-fledged police officers, you are expected to perform your duty to the best of your ability. By ability, you're expected to apply the law as is deemed necessary to all aspects that require law enforcement. In light of the knowledge, understanding, and interpretation you receive during your training, it is also expected that having chosen policing as your career, you would seek to advance in all aspects of policing and law enforcement 
as your profession demands. Towards the highest rank in this, your chosen profession. However, whether it is for rank or position, you should aspire to develop in all your professionalism with excellence and excellence in profession. To do so, you must understand knowledge. You're here, you're graduated. Also realize, avoid the pitfalls of policing. Be disciplined. Do not just go with the flow and perform according to the norm. To use a biblical term, grow in grace and in knowledge. Be different because there's a profession, there's a professionalism to sustain and standards to retain. Be honest and truthful with beauty. Arm yourself with emotional intelligence. Protect your mental health. Manage your emotions. Remember the difference between external power and authentic power. The power to control the environment and those within it is termed external power. It can be lost, stolen, transferred, or inherited. One person gain of external power, one person gain external power is perceived and other persons lose. The result is usually violence and destruction. Avoid this. As you progress, seek to be exemplified by authentic power. The power to develop yourself and those around you. Be your best. I believe you have demonstrated that you will do your best. And we expect you to perform at the highest level of professionalism as you embark on your new career in policing. God bless. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for these officers who have committed themselves to the grueling training to become police officers. They have achieved, they have arrived, but now they must go into the field and demonstrate their knowledge and skill and ability. I pray for them this afternoon that you will endow them with the fortitude and the strength to be different, for the, to be the police officer that they decided to be and dedicate themselves to be. I pray you grant them wisdom and understanding and cooperation among themselves and with the communities which they serve. And I pray that their performance in policing will be excellent in all areas as they progress in this career. Thank you again, Lord, for your favor upon us as we celebrate this afternoon this personal parade, the 46th course. Bless each and every one as we depart in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Cumberbatch, for invoking God's presence with us as we leave and on the recruit as they journey to their new post. Her Excellency, we now invite you to the podium as the recruits to their final display. We want to also invite you guys to the police training complex where refreshments will be served.
Okay, so you know I'm a video.
do you depart? Prime Minister would do the same. May I stand in for the departure of Her Excellency? Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Jeffrey Hanley, now departs. Right Honorable Denzel Douglas, now departs. Commission of Police, Mr. James Sutton. Thank you very much for coming. Don't forget we have refreshment at the training complex. Once again, thanks.